Hola, reyes y reinas, high kings and queens. I pray that today I find you excited to get activated. We are in July. Praise God that we are alive, healthy. Even if we're not feeling the best, we are in July. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for July. We thank you, Father, for your air in our lungs. We thank you for your life, for your activation, for your fire, for your passion, for your uncommon, unexplainable, preferential treatment, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you for your knowledge, your wisdom, your revelation, your insight, your clarity. Um, we thank you for the fruits of your Holy Spirit, the spiritual discernment, the prosperity, the, the partnership in your presence. Lord, we want to be one with you in Jesus' name, we pray. <clears throat> and we thank you, Father, for your word accomplishing everything that you said it to accomplish today and every day that we read your word, get intimate in your word, that we believe your word, that we trust your word, that we trust that everything is working out for our good and it does get better in Jesus' mighty name. We honor you, Lord. May we protect and prioritize time with your presence being in your presence, acknowledging you. Thank you for your miraculous signs and wonders. Thank you for your healing. In Jesus' name, we honor you. Thank you, Father. We honor you. And we welcome July with open arms with because we are exceptional. Exceptional. We are able. We are pre-qualified, favored, protected, deserving, pre-approved, equipped with everything that we need to take on our assignments for July. We thank you for June. We thank you for the good, the bad, and the ugly of June. And that whatever it is that we've learned, whatever we've been blessed with in June, that we take it for this month to bless others. And thank you that we are everything that we just mentioned, Lord. And we, will, we are created to be everything you created us to be. We will be what you created us to be, serve, fulfill, and create in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. We thank you for us to live righteously. We thank you for expanded territories. We thank you that we handle responsibly, steward well, our skills, our anointing, our gifts, um, everything that you have equipped us that we go out into the world and help equip others. We go out into the world and help free others. We go into the world and help heal others. In Jesus' name, we honor you, Lord. And we walk today with expectancy. We thank you for the great activation that you're going to do right now in Jesus' name. Arouse our spirits, Father, to be in unity with you. Have your way, great God that you are. We honor you, Father, for the July being the best July we've ever experienced. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We plead the blood over our families, our loved ones, our enemies, even for every day of the month of July. We honor you, Lord. And today for July, it's Proverbs 4.23, which reads, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from your heart. And we pray, Father, that we guard everything that you've called us to guard, Father. We plead the blood of Jesus over our hearts, over our minds, our spirits, and over everything that flows from us. In Jesus' name. We cannot control what other people do to us, but we can surely control what we do to others. So thank you, Father. We honor you. In Jesus' name. Um, today's title is, It Does Get Better. Change your future for good. Change your future for God. And it will get good. Is it going to get a little rough? Is it going to get a little tough? Yes. However, those challenges are going to be there for us to, to grow, to develop, to be processed. So I pray that today's uh, word gives you great activation, expectancy, excitement. If you're not excited for July or just to be alive, borrow some of mine. Let's get into it. In Jesus' name, let's go to work, as T.D. Jake says. Um, today is, hold on, there's a glare. Jeremiah 29, 11, which reads, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, Plans to give you hope in a future. Many of us may be familiar with this scripture, but I'm going to tell you today, it does get better. Ephesians 3.20 is a great reminder that reminds us as well that now all glory to God who is able. We are able because he is able. Through his mighty power at work within us. There is power in our words. There is power in our protection. There is power in our worship and our praise. There's power, there's activation. Everything that I pray for and I thank God for is because he is. And therefore, when we partner with him, we receive. So we are powerful through his mighty power within us. But to have it within you, you have to make decisions that are going to protect his power, guard his power, uh, encourage his power, encourage and nurture the power that he's given us. How do you do that? We're going to figure it out today. Uh, to accomplish infinitely more than we may ask or think. How many times have you been somewhere and there's been things provided for you that you're like, what? I didn't even ask for this. I'm going to tell you, <clears throat> it's small little things. I went to the gym the other day and I wanted bananas and I didn't want to go to HEB. Uh, pray for me, that laziness spirit. But every week I have my bananas, my fruits. Uh, I went to the gym and I had been 
forgetting to go to H-E-B, but I believe the Lord put it there for me to forget it because at the gym, they were giving free bananas. What? I didn't even ask. Yes, it may see something small. It may seem small. But if you can be thankful in the small, God will give you more. If you're not thankful in the small and you don't see the small, how are you ever going to see the big? Bring your Holy Spirit. Another thing is, I remember there was a car that I wanted, my dream car. I got it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> then it got stolen. I didn't understand why, how, what, who. I was like devastated because I have been, had many um, experiences where other things happen with vehicles that I have. I'm talking about trees falling out the sky, hitting my car right before it was supposed to get so, uh, sold to someone else. Someone was already going to purchase it. However, I'm gonna, that's another video. But I want you to know that when uh, I had got my dream car and it was stolen, I remember I got up for church and my car was gone. And I was like, what? In all of that, I was frustrated. In the moment, it didn't feel like I was getting blessed. But I believe that the rejection is God's protection. I believe that my car rejected me. Uh, they stole my car because maybe something bad was going to happen. I don't know, but I trust God. I didn't trust who stole my car or what happened with my car. But I got a car that was improved, newer, better, everything that surpassed what I wanted. So opportunities come through obstacles if that makes sense and i want you to know that it does get better i have been flipping through tiktok um social media facebook instagram all of these things and there's people in there crying talking about they broke up someone broke up with them they left them a job they lost and they're crying about it and, and a lot of them wanted to just know does it get better and i was like thinking today i was like it does get better <laughs> whatever it is your experience it gets better and here jeremiah 29 is a great reminder what he sent to you is not to harm you it's to help you. It didn't happen to you. It's happening for you. It doesn't feel like it in the moment. But I will tell you this. Two shall pass. Bring the Holy Spirit. Let me get into today's word. Change your future for good. Change your future for God. Let's get into it. Today for July, the first day of July, uh, the author writes, Today's verse is one of the most comforty, comforting, life-giving, and truth-telling in the Bible. It gives you so much hope for your tomorrows and courage for dealing with your yesterdays. When you choose to deal with the wounds and the pain of past rejection, hurt, betrayal, offenses, abandonment, abuse, mistakes, regret, and failures, you take away the power they wield in your heart. There is power in offense, abandonment, abuse, mistakes, regret, failures. Why? How? How is there power in that, Esme? What are you talking about? I'm going to tell you, when I'm hurt, I have the power to either hurt them or to help heal them. A lot of the times when I don't have the words to share with someone, I'm like, you know what? Let me hug them. If they allow me and I feel the spirit leads to hug them, I will hug them. And I will tell you that people just break. There is breakthrough in loving someone when they are not loving you. If it's, if, if, if it's, if it's like not acceptable, but if it's like permitted or if it's, if you got that led of the Holy Spirit, sometimes, sometimes you just got to walk away. You got to do what the Lord leads you to, but pray about everything and anything. So I want you to know there's power in these, these challenges, in these heartaches. There is power. Resurrection power has residue from the resurrection that the Lord did. There is life. So it says, you acknowledge God's good and hopeful plans for your future. Free of the blame game. Stop living in a victim mentality and know that you are victorious. Because if something happened to you, yes, you're a victim. But there's a power in being a victim. You can victimize someone else because you are victimized. Or... Not victimize if you someone offended you and you are the victim of it you can be the victim and play the victim but being the victim is not get you anywhere not with god's power it's not if you cry and you've been hurt and you've offended and you're letting the lord deal with it then let him deal with it and that will give you the power to know that this is not your this is not your revenge this is god's power he will take care of it he will heal you in the process if you surrender and seek his will um, free of the blame game, you can bravely embrace the pain of the recovery process so you can move on. If you stay stuck there, there's nothing that's going to become of it. If someone's already hurt you, then whatever was meant to happen has already happened. You have the power by moving on and allowing God to fix it, heal it, or sometimes you don't even need a sorry. I'm learning now that if I get a sorry or not, I have the power to walk away or I have the power to love them right where they are. And I'd rather choose to love them where they are because as I'm getting healed, I'm learning now that I don't want to hurt others. I've been hurt. I know what it feels like. I know what the thoughts come in like. And I don't want to bring that on anyone because I, I just feel that God has blessed me to bless others and not to break others. Um, so I pray that that gives you great word. So when you find yourself thinking about, talking about, and listening to conversations about negative back there, 
Instead, remember God's promises and changes and change your thoughts and words. I'm telling you that I'm learning now that when people are gossiping, it can overtake you and you'll start saying things that you don't really want to say or not in your character. But it's hi, queen. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for tuning in. Um, we're talking about today changing your future for God, changing your future for good, because July is calling us to guard our power, guard our hearts, guard Everything that the Holy Spirit brings to us. We got to guard his presence and prioritize his presence. Thank you for your time today. Speak about all the good things that God has for you today and in your future. Talking about the good things, the God things, is witnessing well. What does that mean? Esme? It means that whatever has happened in your life, you are going to witness to others. We had talked about this last month, um, the last week, about how we witness our testimony. And in the test, there's a testimony. What's happening to you is for you. Why? Because God is going to bring glory through it. Someone's broke your heart. God's going to heal it and mend it back together again. So therefore, you can go and be a healing and thankful. So therefore, you can go bless others. Bring it, Holy Spirit. After all, his plans for you are for good and not for evil. I'm also learning that in his presence, we will have the fruits of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? It means that when we are worshiping and praising, no matter what is happening, there is purpose in that praise. What does it mean? I've noticed now that there's people that I invite to church and a lot of times they hesitate. They don't want to go, but then the Holy Spirit brings them to church. Thank you, Jesus. I bring them to church with me. I can see them worship and things are breaking in the spirit when you're worshiping. You're surrendering. There's power in your praise. Are they praising because everything's going great in their life? Are they praising because they lost someone? No, they're praising because they're trusting and surrendering to the Lord. Their their voice, when you praise and you worship and you yell, I, I'm realizing now like my grandchildren, they be worshiping and praising like me. I don't know if they know what they're doing, but they see grandma doing it. So we live by example. Are you thankful? You're going to praise through the pain because there's purpose in that praise. Mm. They are plans to prosper you and not to harm you. You cannot change the past, but as you deal with it and move on, move on, <laughs> still talking about it, ain't moving on, still crying about it, ain't moving on, still looking up their social media is not moving on, period. But as you deal with it and move on with God's help, you can change the future. If you're stalking someone's page or looking up your past, how are you going to see your future? The lady that, um, I don't remember her name, bringing Holy Spirit. The lady um, that looked back and turned to stone, they told her not to look back. Um, and I've been having great conviction because I make these slow-mo videos and I look back on, on the, the videos. And I'm like, well, looking back at, like, I'm looking back in the physical. But when we look back on where we've been, what we've been through, who you've been with, and you keep looking back, you can't see the front. And you can't see where you're going. I'm trying to look up my notes um, for my quote, but, um, and I had a different word to bring today, but the Holy Spirit just completely remixed and hijacked this, but thank you, Holy Spirit. We appreciate this word. Um, so I pray that Jeremiah 20, another one is Ephesians 3, 20, as I mentioned to you, is an all glory who is able through his mighty power work within us. He's telling you that you got the power in you. You've got the power to move forward. You got the power to say no. You've got the power to protect God's presence. You seek his presence. You experience his presence. I'll tell you, sometimes you wake up, you're going through, you're going through it. But his presence is a present. It's a gift. Gifts are to be appreciated, acknowledged, uh, protected. When you have his presence, no evil can live in his presence. Can evil things happen? Yes. But you're going to have a different reaction to evil that's done to you. It's just going to be a change of the human spirit, a nature of your spirit. We were talking about that last month. Um, so how do we continue to, to see in his perspective and protect it? The Holy Spirit has fruits. How do we experience those fruits? We got to protect those things. We have resurrection power through his resurrection, through his resurrection, there's residue, bring the Holy Spirit. Um, the lady at the, this is another thing too, is that the lady at the well, her life got better. She had many, many men in her life. Seventh man was, was God. The seventh man was God. Did her life get better after that? Praise Jesus, it did. The man in Bethesda that was laying on the floor, could not walk. God told him, get up. How many of us right now today need to get up? We need to know, does it get better? I have seen so many people on TikTok crying out, does it get better? I'm in a breakup. I'm going through this and this. If you see that someone is your life and they're no longer with you, that means your season has expired. For their reasons, for your reasons, there's going to be a season that you thank the Lord that that season expired. You're going to thank the Lord that they left you. You're going to thank the Lord that they cheated on you. You're going to thank the Lord that they divorced you. You're not going to understand it right now. And you're not supposed to understand it. You're just supposed to trust that it does get better. You study God's word and read. There's many scriptures that it gets better. Jeremiah 29, 11 is the one that comes up above everything. Ephesians 3, 20. There's so many scriptures that 
go advise us and let us know that things do get better. Hold on one moment. Um, and there's another thing for today's uh, quote. Um, it says, so if you are grieving someone that's lost, this may give you some great revelation, which is grief is just love with no place to go. And William Spence wrote that. And the thing is that if you're grieving, grieve, grieve, cry, mourn, you know, you were thankful for that person. Don't stay stuck there. Healing is a process. I don't know if you ever heal from losing a loved one because there's always memories there and there's a love that you gave them. Um, and you're always going to want to give that love, transfer that love and to give it to where the Holy Spirit leads you to. You had that person. They blessed your life. Thank the Lord that you had that person. Many people don't have the love of a grandma, a father, a mother. Um, they don't have that. And I will tell you, once you master the art of suffering, because we will suffer. Every season, you're going to have a suffering. But every season that you suffer over something, that something is going to develop you, process you. It's going to bless you. It will not always be a burden. In one season, it's going to be a burden. The next season, it's going to be a blessing. You may not understand that, but look back. Look back on things that you have been through. You got through it. Got through it. You're alive. If God brings you to it, he will bring you through it. It is happening for you. It is happening for you. I would tell you that I have learned that. Um, in going through ups and downs with my spouse, I, I have learned that my spouse is my assignment. Your spouse is your assignment. So when you're seeking a husband or a wife, you're praying, you're getting developed, you're preparing, you're equipping. The Lord has been, you know, showing you visions and, and promises and goals of things of you being married. I'm going to tell you, it's your assignment. It's a cross you're going to carry. It's not always going to look like rainbows and butterflies and love. A lot of times you don't stay together because you're always happy together. I'm learning you stay together because you made a commitment. Because God sent you that person and it's not always going to bless you. Sometimes it's going to feel kind of heavy and sometimes they're going to get on your nerves. It's okay though. That's why I've always said that whoever the Lord sent me to get married to, they're going to have to love the Lord more than they love me because Esme is crazy. Um, and in that crazy, you have to pick what crazy you want to hook up with because <laughs> everybody's crazy. They got, there's just different types of crazy. There's not more crazy that kill people. And then there's crazy that, oh, in the morning, my breath smells crazy. There's different crazies. Okay. We all have bad breath in the morning. Um, healing Holy Spirit. Uh, so once you master the art of suffering, you got it. I used to tell my son because he was uh, he would ride motocross and I would buy him a bike and then I would buy him a bigger bike. And God told me, okay, it's time he could get a bigger bike. He's ready. Um, but I remember I told my son, like, if you master how to fall, you're good. Once you master how to fall, no matter how high you go, you know how to fall. It's the same thing with God. We're going to suffer. He suffered tremendously. Why are we not going to suffer? Yes, he loves us. But in the suffering, there is going to be a striving. There is going to be in this, in this um, surrender. Like you don't just, you want to just live this life thriving or do you just want to survive? I want to thrive. I want to be selfish with everything that God has for me because I know what he has for me. It's to bless others. So don't be hoarders. Another thing is to, for today's quote is um, the best or most beautiful things are the things that cannot be seen or touched. They, may, they must be felt in the heart. Helen Keller wrote that. Praise God for Helen Keller. Your assignments in your marriage, the love, the intimacy that you have, it's not always going to come from touch. It's going to be that you know you have somebody that's loyal. You have someone that has your back when the world is against it. Um, and it's important for us to know that, that our, our, our children, our um, families, our foes, our enemies, their assignments, how you handle them is how you will be handled. And that's the same thing with the fruits of the Holy Spirit. If the opposite of the fruits, the bitter, the anger, all of those things, you don't handle those things, get those things healed. They're going to handle you and they're going to help destroy what God has for you. The blessings and the anointings, you have to know that the skill set, the mindset, what you have is to bless others. He has given you and he's trusted you. So how do we protect these things? How do we protect the Holy Spirit? The voices of negativity, we need to get them out. You want power in the praise? Your praise needs to be loud enough to where the voices in your own head are gone. So I would tell you that the power in his presence is a present where his presence lives. There is joy. There's the fruits. There's peace. There's grace, mercy, kindness, forgiveness. All of these things live where he lives. If you don't have these things, you don't have the Holy Spirit's presence simple as that um looking over my notes so it's important for us to know that it, life will life we will lose we will gain we will be challenged but if he is the keeper 
of us, he will keep us. If he is our savior, he will save us. If he is our provider, he will keep providing. As long as life is lifing, he is going to continue doing the things for this life. He is a ruler. He has sovereign. He is authority over us. He will protect, provide for us. And glory will be coming through what he's brought in our lives. There will be glory. A lot of things ain't happening for you in the physical. If there's like, you're like praying for something and someone's not making it happen. It's because when it does happen, it's going to be because he brought it to pass. Not someone or not you. Life is lifing. That means he's still providing. He's still covering. He's still ruling. He created everything. It will bend and mold to you in his timing. So I pray and you recognize that when you change your future for God, it's not always going to be good. There's going to be challenges. And that's great because those challenges are going to convert us. The trouble is going to transport us. The trouble is going to transform us and how we see, how we think, how we talk. There's power in all of that. How you think, there's power. How you voice, how you talk, how you worship. There's power in all of that. There's power in your presence. In your presence, there's power. How do you use that power? How do you protect that power? So a question, and I will tell you the one thing that I'm learning that here it says that the beautiful things cannot be seen. They are felt. My grandchildren are bringing such a healing, such a revival in me that if I was, I prayed for my grandchildren when my children were little. God put in my spirit. I was like, really, Lord? Like, I'm just going to jump from a mother to a grandmother. Like, I didn't have no time in between. He was right. I didn't have too much time in between. <laughs> I had been praying for my, my children's spouses at a very young age. Someone had told me, what are you going to do? Wait till the day before. And their spouses, they're, well, they're, they're not married yet, but their, their, their partners are really exceptional human beings. I'm thankful. I prayed. I prayed for those things. I'm still praying. There's some things that I see and I'm like, I'm still going to pray. I'm going to give glory. If I have any complaints or anything, I'm like, Lord, examine my heart. I don't want to be a complainer. I want to be a prayer warrior. So if I see something that's not right, do I hold people accountable? Yes, I do. I do it in love and respect. And I do it where God calls me to. Is it easy? No. Confrontation is not easy. <laughs> However, the Holy Spirit gives me the wisdom. So I want you to know it gets better. We're in July. Is it going to get better than June? Of course it is. Praise God. It is. You're alive. You're well. And if you're thinking like it isn't getting better, it's me. what are you talking about? This happened to me. And then today I woke up to this. That is there to happen for you. It is there to bless you. It's not going to look like a blessing. Kings and queens. It's not going to look like a blessing, but I promise you it will get into a blessing. Um, what I want to tell you is I'm going, I think I'm going to post them, but there's scripture all over the Bible that is telling us there's promises. We are mir miraculously made. We are marvelously, wonderfully made. We are everything that God is when we get with him. So thank you for your time today. Today's prayer is... <clears throat> Lord, we accept, I accept, you accept your good promises for me. Thank you for giving us the power of bravery to accept healing, to acknowledge, experience healing, to prioritize healing, and to walk into the future you have for us, Lord. We want to be in your will, even if it's challenging. We want to guard and protect your presence. We thank you for your power in healing us. If we don't have that, that, that healing, Father, may we have relationships that are ordained to find us. And may we seek healing through your word. May we seek healing through your relationships, through your prayer, through your power, through your presence, through your prosperity has healing. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, Father. We thank you for having us. We thank you for becoming one with us. We thank you that we are exceptionally pre-qualified for everything you have for us in July. We did in June. May we not waste any time that we may have wasted in June for this month of July. And may we be better in August. In Jesus' name, we thank you that if it's burdening us, it's to better us. It's to advance us. It's a choice. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. If you do not have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you can repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart and make you my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for your works in our lives. Thank you for being that miraculous power. May we protect your presence. May we glorify your presence. And may we protect what we are birthing. When you're going to have a child, in Jesus' name, when you're going to have a child, you protect your womb, you eat, you eat better, you exercise. I, I pray that those are the things that we do. But it's the same way when you're, as we talked about with Mary and Elizabeth, um, Mary went to Elizabeth's house to be protected, cultivated for three months so she could give birth to the Messiah. Something you're birthing. Maybe you didn't birth it in June. 
Maybe God has been calling you to birth it and you're prolonging it. You're procrastinating. May you protect what you're birthing. Protected by who's around it. What voices activate it? Get your baby kicking as Mary and Elizabeth, the baby would kick. What is it that activates your purpose? What is it that you're birthing that it gets activated around certain people? Get around those people. Some people, the faces are going to change, but the words and the encouragement and the education is not going to change. It's probably going to get greater, deeper, the more that you start learning. As, as scripture says, you have, when you're in a baby mentality, you have milk. But then when you start growing in the Lord, you're going to have bread solids. So I pray that that blesses you. Thank you for your time invested. Remember, you're a king or queen. You have a responsibility to steward your gifts, your joy, the fruits of the Holy Spirit that are living in you, the power that is in you. You are to steward responsibly and well to others. What you have is just to keep giving. Trees, they, they die. Their seeds, they prepare. There's a, the trees, when they grow, when they're dying and they're like old or they've got a, a sickness, illness, there's something in the ground that stays there. The tree leaves for the next tree. What are we leaving behind to our children's children's children, to our friends, even our enemies? How you treat them. Did you love them when they were challenging? Did you love them when they were difficult or undeserving of your love? God sees all that. You are impacting everyone. You want power of influence to be elevated, advanced. How are you treating the people you have now? How are you treating that one follower? How are you treating the followers that you have? How are you treating your family? How are you treating um, your husband? How are you treating your spouse? All of these things are, are there to how are we going to be trusted? Are you treating your enemies like you would treat someone that you love? Are you loving them? Pray for the Lord to give you his heart, his vision, his mind. And you will become one with him. God bless you, King or Queen. Thank you for your time invested. I pray and I'm excited that we walk with expectancy for July. May we get deeper in his word so we can know what he is. Therefore, we can be a living testimony of his will. God bless you. I pray that this, the quotes for today and today's word advanced you. I pray that it invested well and that you share this with others. Whoever it is that the Lord prompted you to share with, please do, King or Queen. Don't let anyone or anything make you walk out of the, the kingdomship that you're ruling over right now. You are heirs of his power of his grace, of everything that he has. Be blessings to others. God bless y'all. Bye.